Hello, this is Heather Hoffman, and today I'm super excited to be sharing some cards with you using a special collaboration set between Pinkfresh Studio and Hero Arts. The set is called You Make a Difference, and it's part of Hero Arts' 45th anniversary celebration. I'm pairing it up with some beautiful Hero Arts cardstock. I'm using four different colors, mustard, pesto, Adriatic, and plum. I've already trimmed these down to an A2 card size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm gonna use my Misty um, to line up these and stamp them all. It's kind of important to have a stamp positioner for this color blocking technique, because you need to be able to stamp them all um, pretty much identically. So this allows you to stamp them all up and line them up and get the same effect. You can see how this floral frame is the perfect size to fill an A2 card front. I'm um, Gonna go ahead and start with that yellow cardstock, the mustard. That's where we're gonna begin. I'm using a powder tool to help make sure that my embossing powder doesn't stick to anything other than the image I'm stamping. And I'm using clear embossing ink. And because I'm using a stamp positioner and this is such a detailed image, I usually, when I'm heat embossing, I like to stamp it two or three times just because it kind of helps illuminate any user error on my part. The clear embossing ink is always hard to see on your paper. Um, so it's harder to tell if you've missed a spot until you start embossing. and um, So I just like to kind of use that as a fail-safe to fix any user error on my part and make sure I get a good clean and clear impression. I did have a little bit of embossing powder in the center where my magnet was, and I didn't use my powder tool. So I used a clean uh, paintbrush just to kind of brush that off. And once you loosen up, you can kind of blow on it a little um, or just kind of shake it off. But the brush helps loosen it up a little. Right now I'm gonna use my heat gun and quickly heat set this. You can see how I'm just chasing the embossing powder around the outside frame. You can see when the embossing powder starts to melt, it gets um, more opaque white and shiny. So it's a good way to make sure you're not overheating um, and oversetting that. All right, I've done the same thing to all four of those colors. And I'm gonna line up, make sure your images are all facing the same direction. If you do this and one of them's turned around 180 degrees, you're gonna not be able to line up your images and um, it's going to be a little harder. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these down into equal size blocks. So you could stack them all up and do them at once to make sure they were even, but I just quickly lined them up. Um, since they were four and a quarter wide, I started by cutting them at two and an eighth and then each of those in half, so one and one sixteenth is what I'm trimming each of these at. If you stack them all up, it won't really matter if they're perfect, so you don't have to pick a specific measurement. You can just kind of eyeball it. Um, but I just decided to do them one at a time and get them all into thin strips. I went and finished the other half of that as well. And now I have some panels of white um, cardstock. This is a lighter weight cardstock because I want to line these up and I'm going to do some die cutting still. So this is just 80 pound Nina cardstock, slightly smaller than an A2. So my panels overhang just a little. It'll make it easier to get it lined up and not have anything showing from behind. And then I'm just going to add adhesive to each of those strips line them up and make sure to press them together so that they're touching and the patterns match up. And once you've got that one finished, you can just select one color from each pile. Just make sure it's different every time and you'll end up with four panels of color blocked backgrounds with that lovely floral frame heat embossed on there. Now to add the sentiments, I decided I wanted to die cut some windows. So I chose some frames from uh, the essentials line, fancy label frames and basic label frames. And I kind of planned them to match which sentiments I wanted to put with each of them. So I'm cutting a window big enough um, to fit them. I taped each frame in place in the center using a bit of post-it tape, then just ran them all through my die cut machine and pulled all those um, frames and bits of tape off. Now I'm going to use white card bases and I'm going to layer those frames over the front and use those to line up my sentiments on my card bases to have them fit perfectly back behind. So what I'm going to do is line up my white card base, set the frame on top just long enough to line up the sentiment where I want, pick it up with the top of my Misty, remove the frame, and then I can stamp my sentiment um, right on my white card base directly. And then when I lay that frame over the top, you'll be able to see it's perfectly lined up. So I went ahead and finished that with all of those. And then once I finished that, I decided I still wanted to add um, a little bit of a white frame matter on the edges. So I trimmed each panel down and then I'm gonna adhere them with foam adhesive over the top. Two of these panels, I um, did the trimming so that I could um, adhere it at in one corner and have a white frame on two sides on that bottom and left edge you can see on that one. And then the last two here on the left, I did them 
so that the frame went all the way around the edges equally. I couldn't decide which way I liked better, so I just kind of did two with the offset angle and two with an equal frame all the way around the edges. It's such a fun technique and a fun way to use a background stamp and mix and match different color schemes, and this way I could use all the sentiments as well. Thanks so much for coming by. I hope you have a wonderful day.